Hello, how are you doing? Mac and Cabby here, and look, we've got a familiar face on the channel. It's the one and only the Mad Mistake. He's come to visit Carlisle. How are you doing, Terry? Good to see you. Fella. Nice one, mate. Nice one, you mate. Right? Pleased to meet you. Uh, I watch your videos, but I said we'll catch up at some point. We have, haven't we? We have. Now. We've eventually, eventually caught up. So we're going to about Carlisle. Uh, and you brought the sun with you. I brought the sun with us. You definitely, the yes. It's gorgeous, normally right? rain. I've got a you know a raincoat and umbrella. You know, Max and all sorts, but Sonny, I don't need that. Need the shorts and t-shirt today. It's, it's as much as shocked as I am with the sun and the weather. I was shocked as well the fact like you weren't at the match yesterday. No, I lost his 50th birthday, so unfortunately I couldn't make yesterday's match. But next home game, back there again. Oh, yeah, absolutely, back to. <laughs> I Wednesday. watched it. I got back from the party in just like about 10, 15 minutes, just before Bloody Vardy scored. Like so, I got to watch most of the match anyway, but. Another defeat, isn't it? Another defeat. It is another Five defeat. in a row. I know. It was. It was like me. I was doing the stream. I was setting up, and I went and picked me boys up from football, and um, I got in the car, and it was only a ten-minute journey. But I wasn't in the car two minutes, and that's when Vardy scored. I didn't Aye. see the goal, but I heard it. I've seen a black eye. It's uh, in the set pieces, isn't it? Disappointing again. Disappointing. I mean, not the tallest players, is he? Vardy really? No. We should be defending better against Vardy, like. But they were quality side. End of the day, take nothing away from Leicester. They were quality side. They got Premier League players. And you know they got a strong bench, and it was always going to be difficult to get a result against Leicester. But I thought the second half we showed a spirited performance, and if we can take that forward to the next few games, we'll start winning games again. I think. I do agree. I think it was um, look Leicester. Leicester came out. They did what they need to do. Yeah. All guns blazing. They showed the experience. Um, we all felt a goal was coming, and it did. Um, and you know, yes, they did sit back a bit, but it was nice to see Sunderland, especially the second half. Playing some nice fluent football, which we're known to do. It is, I. You know what I mean? And um, coming, I mean, look, Rig, Chris Rig was outstanding. He was skinning for it, left, right, and centre. He was getting past his men. And no fear, was there? There was no fear. There's no at all. fear with Chris Rig, and I think for me, he was my man of the match last he was, night, yeah. by the way. But I think that we've got to keep on keep hold of someone like Chris Rig in the summertime. Yeah. That's the reason why we've got to invest in a decent head coach and, and, and adjust this model. You know, I mean, I want to see Chris Wick start most games between now and the end of the season, see what he's got. But we need to adjust the model because we have we have got a core of, of decent quality young young players there. Some of them won't make it. No, we'll probably lose some in the summer as we don't get promoted to the Premier League. But replacing them with quality, if we can get some, uh, I would say, a 23 to 27 year old experienced players with some ex years of experience in the Championship or Premier League to go along with those youngsters and bring in more youngsters as well and get that balance right, we could have a good season next season. Yeah, balance is a massive key. Is, of course, yeah. our, our, our legend Kevin Phillips, he's, he's, he stated that a few months ago, didn't yeah, he? Did he? I, he's, I, uh, I. The most important thing is, is, is the balance and stuff. I mean, well, as we've been saying for many games this season, including um, last night, um, we're, we're missing that killer instinct, we? we're missing that strike, we're missing that person who knows where to be at the right time. Maybe he's not scoring world beaters, but we're, we're missing that Jamie Vardy type of person, the player who's there at the right time, just waiting for the ball to bounce and bang, get in. Yeah. It's like we're Sunderland at the minute, the ball could be bouncing in the Leicester City box a um, hundred times and there's there's nobody at the end of it to put it away. We're just not getting bodies in the box either. We're not getting it. bodies in the box. And the no. strikers that we have are not really out and out strikers. No. You've got Samido, a young kid from Benfica. There's no guarantee he's going to be making it in this level as well. So, but he could be a season or two away from at his at his best or improvement. Rushin is more kind of like a, I would say, more of a winger likes to drift in and score goals. And he just score goals, give him his due. But whether he's going to make it in the championship at this level again, it's not an out and out striker. Burst I'll send him back to Chelsea straight away because he's not our player. I'd oh. rather develop the young lads we've got. We sent Miendo away. So the, the the final ball, the killer instinct. We do it for me. We, we've got a good uh, sort of a good setup, a good bunch of players. We're just missing that that striker up top, but also learning to play with a striker again. Yeah. Because we seem to have played so long without a striker and a feeling of Speakman not replacing the striker, and also get rid of the, all, all the talent, all, all the experience like Gooch, Bart, and, and Pritchard. Pritchard was playing for Birmingham last night. Yes. We got a point against Hull. So there's lots of things to address in the summer, but like I say, it's not all doom and gloom. It looks promising if we can keep all the Chris Rig. For another season, that would be absolutely amazing because I think he's a star in the making. Oh, he, he, he is. I've liked him since since I first seen the lad. Yeah. Um, but you're right. Without, without that that striker thingy, it's like we're just going down the channels, aren't we? It's ah. the right, left, right, left, and it's like look, it was bad enough without Clark, but now we've, we've lost Roberts, and it's like it's like you know, I, th I think some of the fans as well, including myself, have been a bit harsh. But you know, we're plagued once again with injuries. Um, it was bad enough not having a striker, but to lose 
Clark and Roberts, it's you know, it's it's made things really really difficult and stuff. And that's why I think Chris Rigg fitted in really well yeah, definitely. yesterday. I mean, do we start Mundell over over Job as well? Does Job need a rest now for the Southampton game? Because possibly Mundell, he look when he comes in, he looks good. I think he, look, he looks decent. Mundell, you know, he, he looks yeah. threatening. He's direct. Chris Rigg's direct. And that's where I'm disappointed with the owner and disappointed with Speakman because we have got a good core of quality youngsters there. We're just lacking about three or four decent, ex you know, we're not, we're not talking over the hill experienced players or no, players no, no. who have peaked to the, to the, you know, and then on the way back down, we're talking players who are still mid twenties, would have one or two, three years of good experience behind them. It can help the youngsters come through. And with the right head coach, you know, and if, the, if, if KLD wants to sit in the championship or, or, or Tita with sort of relegation battles and possibly even go down one season, keep doing what you're doing and, and eventually you will fall through the trapdoor. But if you want to invest all the Jack Clark's money in some quality players, a quality head coach, we could be, you know, back in the top six next season. 100 at 100%, and that's what we're after. Um, you know, it's, people want to know where's the money gone from the sale of Ross Stewart, etc. Um, you know, you've you've got to invest. The only way you're going to climb up the pyramid is is spend. Unfortunately, right. it's that's the only way you're going to do it. it. You might get a little diamond in the rough, like a Kevin Phillips who appeared just pittance for from right. was it what was, was it what from I, I got him from? And uh, look, look at the gem he turned out to be. But the, you're not guarantee that every player, are you, Terry? I, 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 by a by a long shot. So it's. I think the fans are frustrated because yeah, how many times have we been? Saying we need a striker, we need a striker. How many transfer windows have I been saying we need a striker? And we and we ain't. It's did like Phil, did Philip play for Southampton as well? I can't remember now. I think he did play for Southampton. Oh, so is that way he started off? I think so because he started off as, as like a, was it like a different position than strike, wasn't it? I forget now. I think so because he you know you sometimes a pundit on Sky. Oh, I, I think there was another fella who was a pundit or you getting interviewed. And I think it was Kevin Phillips' first um, first manager, I think oh, it was. Right, aye, aye. Vaguely, I think I remember somewhat like that. Yeah, but I mean, the likes of Clark, we sell Clark, obviously at a quarter of the money goes to You think he'll go? Uh, well, I hope he doesn't. No. But the way that his agent was talking, Ian Hart, it sounded like he was going in the summer regardless. But, if he, for example, if he did go, that's when you spend that, extra, that money and you try and bring the team up to the next level. Yeah. So I understand what they're doing from League One to the Championship, you buy in cheaper players and you get one or two gems, you do your sort of scout and get one or two gems that come through. But then you then when you sell when you unfortunately sell those players, you've got to reinvest all that money and then bring the level up again. So the next quality level of youngsters or experienced players you bring in lift the team up to the next level. I think that's what Brighton and, and Brentford did at one point. And they've, look how look how well they're doing. Exactly, uh, and, the and if that's what that's the way they're going to go. They've got to do it like that, you know. I'm hoping they're not just here just to make cash, not just to make money and sit around in the championship the profit. And, yeah, and make profits. I'm hoping they have this long-term plan they've got. We'll know in the summertime because if we do unfortunately sell like to Jack Clark and the money's not reinvest, then we'll know the full of shit. If the money gets reinvested, then we'll know. There's that, there's that sort of plan there. I would definitely say KLD and Speakman are more than happy and satisfied with being in this championship this season. I think they're saying, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. But I think the Sun and fans are just so, so disappointed the way we've collapsed. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it and, is, and, and, and five defeats in a row and oh, then Southampton at the weekend. And I still don't, as much, that game last night gave me hope mm -hmm. that we'll win a couple of games this season. That's all I, think, I think we need one win mm -hmm. and then we see if. The only way we'll ever ever we'll go down this season is if we lose every single game between now and the end of the season in teams like Huddersfield and so far we're games. on course. <laughs> but I don't think it'll last. We're on course, but we still, you know, I think we've still got plenty of points in the bag. And you know, sometimes I, I do knee jerk reactions in, in match review straight after the game where I'm angry about a couple of cans and I'm like just losing my sh passion, shit a Terry, bit. Passion, passion, I. But when I sit down in the cold light of day, I think, yeah, realistically, we'll probably end up bottom half of the table. But I think we'll be safe. Mm -hmm. And then we'll go again next season, hopefully invest in any money. Or even if we don't sell players, we've still got to invest some more money. You know, KLD has got to bring some money into the club. Now, whether that's, you know, just by using some of his mum's money or whatever it is, or selling one or two, you know, sort of players that are not going to make it. I mean, some of these players are something that won't, they won't all make it in the championship players. They won't all make it the Premier League players. No, For example, Barr. Might be only, you know, might be so, maybe they a, a meet the lower table championship player. There's no guarantee every single youngster that comes into the club is going to be a Premier League player or, or a top championship player. Some are going to fall through the trapdoor, but the ones that we do get, we've either got to try and keep hold of for a few seasons, 
I make sure we get the money and we make sure we get the top dollar for them as well. Not looking about like in the olden days where we just sold a player and we just accepted mid-table range sold them. For it. for money, yeah. We get top dollar. We put it we put Jack Clark out there and then and then teams have got to come in and we get the highest price, hold out for the highest price. We've got to. Like and then the Sam, invest. Sam and Pansel call when, when we got pittance for Josh Maggio oh. and I thought they should have, they should have got four times I a mean, month for them. I mean, they got rid of all those youngsters. They got rid mm. of, I think it was the lad went to Manchester United. Then there was the lad who plays in Liverpool. Now McConnell, he, he went, he got kicked out down to Liverpool. He's a 15 year old. Player. And look at him now. We're, oh, we've God. had some quality players in the books. But it's just, just the, the short sightedness of some people like Stuart Donald Sam and Pants. Short sightedness. I'm hoping the owners now. Have a, do you know have this long-term goal and I can see what they're trying to do you know it's all doom and gloom but it's got to adjust the model a bit and make it more in the middle I think there'll be alarm bells um because I think the Sunderland fans will, will, will wave this season and say right fair enough fair enough let, we'll let the season go we're, we're still better than where we were we're not in the league one Aye. um but I think alarm bells will be massively starting to ring if Sodal gets done in the summer there's nothing hard is getting brought in and we start off the first 10 or 12 games like we are now. Yeah. I, th I think you'll start to see a real backlash from the fans. Oh, yeah, if, if, it, if, it, mm. if there's nothing happening, or if it's the same sort of model, he's, uh, he's just going fishing <laughs> for, in the Eastern European market for 19s, 18s and 20 year olds and stuff. And if the same's carrying on, the fans will start getting on the uh, if, if we they'll, sell they'll, a couple of players, if say Ballard, example, Ballard, I hope he doesn't go, Ballard and Neil goes or whatever club. Oh. Maybe it's two, two of those, two or three of those go. Maybe it's Chris Rigg. If we lose two out of those four players and the money's only invested in more bits of kids coming through and the season starts badly, they'll be hell on. Oh, Because absolutely. they broke the promise. They said that they're going to have this plan to get in the Premier League. I remember last season, I think, Speakman was twisting because we got top six and we, we didn't make it to the final of the playoffs. Oh, we're going for top two next season. Bollocks, isn't it? Let's face it. Mm. We're nowhere near top two. We've never been anywhere near top two. It's difficult when players, teams like Leicester come down, Leeds come down, Southampton, fair enough. That's a, that's a difficult gulf to sort of bridge that gap. You're always going to have that, It is, you're always going to have that. But as long as we can improve our squad, season in, season out, eventually we'll be up there and we'll have a chance. But we've got to make sure it's, uh, the, the investment's there and we'll know. We'll, this is, for me, this is, do or, this is do or die. This is the season where we'll know in the summer. If we do the same this, this summer as last summer, then we know they're not interested. KLD, one thing you can't get away from is yes, he can hide behind the sofa, he, 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 can, he can hide under the bush, whatever, but time eventually catches up with them, oh, and right. time will tell what their ambition is. And you know, and um, yes, it's nice to be in the championship, but as we all know, you know, p potentially we're a Premier League club, we belong there, right. of course we're they. Yeah. And there's only so many seasons where Sunderland will say, well, this is getting stale, championship, what's going on? We need, not, to, be, we need to be pushing up. I'm not, a mass, I'm not a fan of Speakman, I'm not really. No, I'm sort of. <laughs> look how much they've mucked around with, with the managers now I don't know if it was a bit of both between Mowbray and I don't believe he purely got the sack I think Mowbray weren't happy um, and then, he, then they bring bloody <coughs> really been bailing do you know what I mean and can you imagine how that's going to upset whatever morale there was in the dressing room with the players oh, no. they, they mustn't have not known what's coming or going when that happened came in knee jerk reactions they got oh. rid of Mowbray because Mowbray wasn't happy and it was like Mowbray wanted this, wanted that mm. and the club were like, no, we didn't want this. So they got rid of Mowbray thinking, oh, we'll get anybody we want. We'll get anybody we want. And then they realised they cannot. They cannot just get good quality head coaches in, paying pittance or to go along with this model and getting no experience in. So they got Bale and probably a yes man who would come in and just get paid. He's out of work, get paid a job, a cheap option to come in. Nobody wanted him there. He was, on, he, he was on a loss straight away and he wasn't very good. Now he's gone, we move on. You know, Speakman, KLD, I'm not your biggest fans, but like all Sunderland fans, most important thing is winning games of football. Yes. If you buy in the summer and we win games of football next season, the fans will be on board again, simple as. But we've got to see improvements, we've got to see winning games of football. We've got to see the owners of the club actually respecting the fans, you know, in lots of different areas off the pitch as well, because they've been, you know, for me, it's atrocious off pitch at the moment, the way it's being held with season cards and, and, and trying I'm not to get. Listening uh, to the, fans the whole thing is a shambles, you know, we could talk all day about it. But let's get on the pitch sorted out first 
and then we'll start off pitch. He's already promised things will change off pitch by February, I think he was. So now if that's passed, let's see what changes in the, over the summer. Let's see how next season starts. If next season starts in exactly the same as this season off pitch, then we know again that it's talking rubbish. It's frustrating the fact how many players we're missing out on. I mean, look at Ipswich for God's sake, how many years they've been in League One. All right. It's like, why couldn't Sunderland Keep all the broadhead. Why? Why are we missing out on these players? Well, there was rumours about MV. MV was tweeting all the time. He wants to come to Sunderland. Why is he holding the scarf for West Brom? Do you know what I mean? Why? Why are we just missing out on all these all these players? You know, it's it, it that, that really does wind me up. Yeah, single-mindedness like, of this of this youth policy, isn't it? Oh, They're just refusing to spend any money. Broadhead's quality. We should have oh, kept. Yeah. We should have kept all, all right. the broadhead. He's banging them in for fun for the Ipswich. Yeah. I, I think again it was just it just because I think I don't know maybe they wanted a bit too maybe zip switch or who bought it again where did he come from again bought it Everton, Everton I think yeah. Everton wanted too much money which well, it's a bit of a shambles at the end of the day it, it would have been money well spent he was injury prone at Sunderland but he's proved he's a young lad he's done well and I think he's a quality striker he's better than any strikers we've got simple as Broadhead you know you beat any of our oh, strikers at the moment all, buy him, all. definitely I right. so end of the day we'll move on to Southampton hopefully we can get something, something down there but if we don't there's other games I think we'll win this season anyway yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, th I think they've got like sort of two, dare I say, three hits. Leicester, we weren't expecting anything. Aye. We're sort of not expecting anything against Southampton. Who, uh, it seems a long time ago we flashed them five now, didn't it? Aye. <laughs> End of the day, the fans are the most important thing at the club and the owners have got to start, you know, realising that. <laughs> and all these fans who spend hard on cash going all the way away matches week in, week out. And but they're still filling away grounds. I know. Oh, the, because the, the fan base is tremendous. The fan mm. base is tremendous. And season cards will be coming for renewal soon. So I want to hear something positive coming up the club because I, I know a lot of people who won't renew the season cards under the current ownership and the current model. So I'm hoping something will change, you know, and they'll start respecting the fans and, and treating the fans with respect. And, and hopefully, you know, it will change for next season. It's got, it's got to be, like I say, the, the, the clock's ticking. I think they've got another chance, they've got another lifeline, but um, the pivotal point is the summer transfer window and the first couple of months into next season. And I think that's going to be the, 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 the seesaw for, right, for KLD yeah. and Speakman. Excellent. All right, definitely. Aye. Hopefully a better season next season. Hopefully top six if we can uh, get the experience yeah. in, get a good quality striker in. You know, a good holder midfielder, should we say. Get rid of the likes of Dak, because, I mean, for me, it's just a waste of a wage, to be fair, because, I mean, yeah, absolutely. we knew he was injury-prone when he came to the club, and yet he's still here, and he's been injured two or three times and played how many games? Two, three. What an absolute waste of a yeah. wage he's been. And he's on a decent wage as well. Yeah, I know, I know. So, I know. we may as well have got rid of him and kept Pritchard. Just a no-brainer to me, but that's just the way it is at the it moment. Is it is what it is. Soon as the, the owners sort of have their ideas on something, they don't, don't seem to change it, but I hope they do learn from this season and change for next. Absolutely. Well, Terry, it's been a, a pleasure, mate. Um, exactly, cheers, mate. What's, what's your plans for the, the rest of it? Mad Mistake, obviously, you know Mad Mistake. Um, give him a sub, give him a like. And he's uh, Mads. Mads out and about. Out I'm doing about. a video this afternoon on Carlisle. Just had a bit of chat with their Stuart to do with their what's what's getting on with Carlisle to do Give with Give it this. a look. But yeah, I'm gonna do a video on Carlisle. But don't forget to subscribe to this bloke as well, Macam Cabby, doing a great job. Subscribe to him, get him over two thousand subscribers. What are you on now? Um one thousand eight hundred and something. It's going up slowly, uh, but it's definitely yeah. get him over two thousand subscribers. Don't forget. Cheers anyway, thanks anyway. Thanks Terry, enjoy your day.